Welcome back. Super excited. Moving forward in this lesson, I'm going to talk about the AWS machine learning and artificial intelligence and how AWS applies and how we can learn as Python developers. So let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about the difference between AI and ML. So machine learning is a method of achieving artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence is really think of this as being on a top or the outer circle and in the inner circle you have the machine learning the artificial intelligence is a broader concept of machines that can carry out tasks we would consider intelligent so maybe they're redundant tasks that you wish to automate and have them self-learn this would be an ai which is a broader concept now within ai is machine learning which in turn is the application of ai itself which is based on the idea that when you feed data, the machines should be able to learn for themselves. So the key word here is data, which means big data. And we'll, get, we'll see how that really applies to machine learning. We talk about big data. Next, the machine learning in DAO. So different types that I like to discuss. The first is the supervised learning in which systems are simply exposed to large or big data of labeled data. Here, the keyword that you want to focus on and remember is labeling. So all of your data is labeled or contains a label. And some systems may need to be exposed to millions of examples to master a task. So this is supervised learning, which is fairly common. There's also a big challenge these days of finding labeled information or data because typically your data is not labeled you for example if you were to let's say take pictures of images okay and you have hundreds of thousands of images but all you have is the actual image now that image needs to be associated with a particular label so labeling is a big big challenge in machine learning today next is the unsupervised learning which tasks algorithms with identifying patterns in data, trying to spot similarities and split data into categories. So this is unsupervised learning or unstructured. Then you have semi-supervised learning, which is again a mix of both supervised and unsupervised. In this case, it's just small amounts of labeled data and large amounts of unlabeled data to train systems. So again, you're combining a top two. Reinforcement learning is another type, which is concerned on how software agents ought to take actions in an environment to maximize some notion of cumulative reward. A computer system receives input continuously and constantly is improving by itself, and that's really reinforcement learning. And finally, we have the deep learning where we get into neural networks that are pretty much expanding these days into other networks. With a large number of layers, you can have several layers the more the layers you have within deep learning the more effective the outcome would be and they are trained using massive amounts of data so you have millions and millions of images so just a high level overview for machine learning at this point and you need to kind of understand these in depth the different types okay so when we talk about label data you ought to know it's supervised learning you know what is unsupervised learning and so forth Next is the accuracy of machine learning. So to understand, interpret, and compare the accuracy of the machine learning system, there are about three things that I want to focus on. First, very importantly, what is being predicted? What is the final outcome that you're looking for? For instance, if you were to predict the weather for tomorrow, well, that has to be based on some data, some prehistorical data, right? And that's where the big data comes in. So you take a look at the last 10 year patterns of data for that particular weather in a particular region. And then you can predict what's it gonna be like tomorrow. The second is the confidence of the prediction itself. So for instance, let me give you another example for confidence. So in facial analysis and, and face recognition, for instance, AWS recognition that we'll take a look at in Python, tells us how confident the service is in a specific result. 
And we know that machine learning systems are probabilistic by nature. In other words, you're running statistical models, right? Like linear regression or model regression, for instance. And they end up with a result, a confidence level or a confidence interval. Could be 90%, could be 95%, could be 99%, and so on. So the confidence score can be thought of as a measure of how much trust the systems place in their results. Of course, the higher the confidence number, the more the results can be trusted. The next is the use case for predictions. So how are these predictions going to be used? So combined with the confidence, the use of the machine learning prediction is also important as it helps out put the accuracy in context. Let me give an example. When using, again, face analysis, for example, or face recognition to search for images containing, let's say, sunglasses, right, in a particular photo catalog, showing more images in a search result is often more desirable, even if there are some that aren't perfect matches. So because of the cost of an imperfect result in the use case is low, people often accept a lower confidence in exchange for more results and less manual inspection of those results. Using face recognition to identify persons of interest in an investigation maybe, or law enforcement as another example, should use the recommended 99% confidence threshold because it's important to identify, especially in the eyes of law. So it is important to understand the risks and the accuracy of machine learning. So next, I want to talk about the AWS recognition as an example. So AWS recognition uses deep learning based image and provides video analysis. For instance, you could do object seen and activity recognition, face recognition. You can also analyze contours of your face, right? Some more in-depth facial analysis. You can track individuals, unsafe content detection, celebrity recognition, and text in images. So this is a good example, and we'll be using this, we'll be demonstrating this, as well as how it connects with Python, and then we can run Python program and manage AWS recognition. Next is the some key concept that I'll also like you to remember and kind of understand. First is the data sources. The data source is an object that contains metadata about your input data. For example, Amazon Machine Learning reads your input data. The, it computes the descriptive statistics on its attributes and stores the stats, along with the schema and other information as part of the data source object. So it's important that the Amazon ML uses the data source to train and evaluate a machine learning model and generate batch predictions. Then we have the machine learning model. An ML model is, think of this as a mathematical model that generates predictions by finding patterns in your data. The Amazon ML supports pretty much about three types of models, binary classification, multi-class classification, and regression. So regression is simply a goal of training a regression ML model is to predict a numeric value, right? Just like I mentioned earlier, for example, if you're predicting the weather for tomorrow, you should be at least 90% or 95% confident that it's going to be sunny outside. Similarly, you need to be 99% confident if you're working with a law enforcement scenario. So that is an example of a regression. Multi-class, this here, the goal of training a multi-class ML model is to predict values that belong to a limited, predefined set of permissible values. And binary is simply predicting values that can only have one of the two states, right? Either true or false. Evaluations measures the quality of your ML model and simply determines if it is performing well. So in evaluation, you can think of this as having model insights, you can have the cutoffs, the accuracy, precision, recall, and so forth. Batch predictions are for a set of observations that can run all at once. And this is ideal for predictive analysis that do not have a real-time requirement. We also have the real-time predictions. And these are 
for applications with low latency requirement. For instance, like an interactive web, mobile, or desktop application. So any machine learning model can be queried for predictions by using the low latency real-time prediction application programming interface. Next, the AWS Artificial Intelligence kind of break down into three main layers, which I want to like to highlight at this point, which all sit on top of the AWS infrastructure and network. And this is known as the Amazon AI. So if you come across this term, this is what it actually means. So on top, you have the AI services, which includes Amazon Recognition, Amazon Polly, Amazon Flex. Then you have the AI platform at the middle. You have the Amazon Machine Learning, EMR, Spark ML. And then the third layer is the engines that drive. In other words, you can have Apache, TensorFlow libraries, you can have Cafe, you can have PyTorch, and so on. And finally, we have the Amazon Machine Learning Stack, which is a robust cloud-based service that makes it easy for developers of all skill levels to use machine learning technology. The stack itself, again, similar to the AI that we just looked at earlier. And you can see that it's also divided into three layers, right? The application services, you have platform services in the middle, and then you have the frameworks and infrastructure. What I'd like to mention here is the platform services, which is the second layer that you see. You see an option called Mechanical Turk, which is a service or, let's say, a community out there. You can go online uh, to Amazon Mechanical Turk and then hire individuals to do some tasks for you. And you can pay them. Okay, think of this as a freelance website or something like that. This is typically used, by the way, in real world. I've used this for labeling data. Okay, So if you have a lot of data and you wish to do supervised learning, then you need someone to actually manually create those labels for you. And again, that's a big challenge for machine learning as of today. So I hope this helped practice with all of these important concepts and terms because I'll be using these interchangeably throughout the course moving forward. If you have any questions, post in the discussion area. I'll be glad to help and clarify. With this, let's move to the next lesson.